a few things here, hopefully pretty fast. This member and this member, that's number two and number 11, I think they were designed as a shear wall system, if you will, while this thing is uh, being temporarily being supported by itself until the rest of the structure was put together to give it its, uh, it's all, it's, so it's all locked in. I think that's all that's really going on there. Uh, let's see here. Let me see. post hoc. I was sharing this with uh, Fred. Awesome donation. Thanks, Fred. The, uh, so I do this to make sure to myself, to make sure I'm not saying just because I saw one action, it's not related to the action that we're looking at. For example, we know post-tensioning was going on up top or detensioning. Post, I mean, removal or taking, putting tension on or taking tension off. But if we remove these guys off of here all together, can we still come up with a failure? And if they weren't there at all together, typically we'd look for failure in the middle. Trust bridge tensioning comparison uh, compression analysis. It's a few points in here around eight minutes, etc. This is what I said in a previous video, and often I, I delete um, comments that that I come through me first. What people are saying, it doesn't have to be in balance and things like that. Um, these have to be in equilibrium, one way or another. You're going to get these joints in equilibrium, or or you just you're just going to have failure. Typically, uh, they're 60 degrees, as I as I said about equilibrium. But this bridge is nowhere near 60 degrees with its with its what it's got going on. We're going to come back to that. It's got its own dynamics going on, which is so hard for me to calculate and figure out what's your zero forces. You know, is this is a compression? This is compression. Is this tension? Um, is this one then tension? What happens when you put the uh, post tensioning on it or taking it off? I think when you take it off, you have nothing but. If the other one's on the other side, is it going to now create a racking effect? Will it pull that direction? If it pulls that direction, uh, would it create a hinge here? You know, taking the man out of play now, the men out of play. If you were to take tension off of this, would something change? So then we go to the sheet here. And we look at the sheet, the post-tensioning sheet, and we see number two and number 11. Number two, the member is 42 foot long. Well, let's call it 43 if you like. It's going to get 280 kips. It's uh, going to get an elongation of 166 and 181 respectively for the A and B bars in there. Number 11 A and B bars are shorter. The whole member is shorter than the uh, number 2. I think people have it reversed about length, but it doesn't matter if reversed or not. With that said, as we come over to number 11, the length of elongation is going to be 1.39 and 1.4. That's probably proportional to the number choose length of this elongation which brings you back to this just being a brace a shear wall a brace if you take th these two out you just have a potential for the th i think they counter each other in this structure as it's just sitting there so the thing doesn't rack doesn't fall one way or the other way as far as forces go and here it's got many plenty of joints also plenty of uh, cold joints i'm calling them here 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 it's got this beautiful hinge here, here. Now, let's jump into the engineers. They had, they were talking about cracks, not crack, as I previously said, and I think my, one of my first videos, listening to the uh, engineer again, Pate, he says cracks with an S. They had what appears to be a two hour meeting about cracks. Now, we're dealing with FIU. FIU is, a, I'm calling a structural engineer college, famous for this bridge here, this bridge particularly. So we have, those famous, well-known engineers, all bridge guys, we have uh, possibly um, VSL in part of this conversation because VSL are the engineers that were doing the post-tension engineering. We're all assuming, remember the post-hoc thing, we're all assuming they were doing it because of the cracks. We've also heard they were doing testing. All right, no, no one's, you know, I, I don't know about all that, but... We're assuming that they're there doing that. Perhaps they were going to be there anyway, and they were just doing this. And the cracks were decided that we're not doing anything with the cracks at this time. But nevertheless, they had two hours with engineers, at least two engineers. But to talk about a crack for two hours means that it's just cracks, rather. It means a significant amount of cracks going on here. A significant amount of movement. What movement was it? Was it just the cracks here where the, where the cold joints are, which is, eh, you know. Well, we thought they would show up anyway. 
But you spent two hours talking about it. So that's what I have a big issue on. That You can figure out a lot of things real fast if it's all your structure. If it's everything you knew about from the ground up. And Pate, we're assuming, knows about everything about this structure from the ground up. So the cracks we're going to assume didn't come from the piers. We're settling because of now the new load. We're, we're just going to assume that. Because they went still full steam ahead with VSL, then working on each end of the... Uh, what I'm calling the uh, the racking. You know, if this is racking, first just because it's got practically no load on it at all, and, and that's what I don't know, because I don't know what members they use, and I don't know, and when I say members, I mean these post-tension bars. I don't know what 1.93 or 1.49, um, what elongating these members, what were they create. We assume they create 280,000 kips. Uh, we also know that it's extending out, and as may I, as we all sort of jumping to, is that they jackhammered around there because the jackhammer's present. Remember, we got to go back to post hoc. So just because one's present doesn't mean they're all related. So let's go with the post hoc. And everyone who says it's the uh, it's the fire department's equipment, well, I just think that's ridiculous. That's a toy for something like uh, this bridge. All right, it would not be a toy for opening up a section here to get more access to. So let's say they use it to open up to access this more. And we all know that the rod has, it's extending much farther out than it would. Perhaps VSL has a connection they can attach to an existing um, rod to somehow put an extension on it, then allows them to put a tool on it. I, I'm just saying, I'm just giving another alternative answer and I did not find that with anywhere where VSL had it on a website or frankly I did not find it. Uh, but let's say that they were here tensioning. That was well if they were detensioning, let's go with that. If they were detensioning, though that would counter the whole idea of putting a shear wall in, taking it off before the forces were the bridge was complete, as it states here, number eight. Post tension bars in members two and eleven will not be grouted. That means they're not going to be permanent. Grouting locks it in will not be grouted and will be de-stressed after main span construction is complete. Do not remove bars. Okay, that means even after it's complete, you're not going to remove the bars, as, as stated there, because there is no remove bars later. There is do not remove bars. It's a period. There is no, well, we'll remove bars later. Or we'll remove, it's, it's clarified. Do not remove bars. So they were not removing the bars, as anyone may say. That would be counter to uh, these drawings. And of course, I think another set of drawings should be available because I did not find any transverse post longitudinal cables across here, which is, should be a total of 65 as per the uh, sheet, the workup sheet of uh, the post tensioning. The so this if, if this goes under my racking, that is designed as a racking ability to keep the bridge from going left and right, uh, north and south rather. Then, and I'm actually saying north and south because that's the north end of the bridge, that's the south end. This is the south end. That, that's what it's designed for. Here's the hinge, perhaps, to help with this uh, racking, um, why this is made permanent. And so that would tell you that all these joints are flexible, that they're all designed to be have some movement in it, which would be great for the hurricane, uh, hurricane wind movement forces that are um, random, if you will. So going back to, now I'm going to jump you over here and wrap this video up. So this means, to, do not try, this is part of my life, do not try, even though it clearly looks like they're associated. Let's see what happens if we dis disassociate these post-tensioning with the collapse of this bridge. And we have it here. No, typically you would think it would collapse in the middle, but we don't have a typical 60 degree angle everywhere within each one of these um, uprights diagonals. So this means the forces are all over the place on this bridge, trans transferring it everywhere. And I did in a previous video, and then I got trolled on it, and I just, I just made a private video at that point, where I was just having an open-minded discussion about, maybe this, this is really supposed to be groundbreaking bridge. Maybe it's designed at all three of these to just push tension this way on this, and, re and the rest of the direction changes here and pushes tension here. And, it puts tension in the middle of the bridge all going in one direction and tension in the middle of the bridge all going the other direction. It was something I was exploring in my brain and, and I got trolled for, for it. And I decided, you know what, I'm not going to leave that up. And so I pulled it down after less than a thousand views or I made it private. Okay, because I couldn't get a couple of people uh, to uh, explore that thinking on that process. 
is just a zero force member, you know, you've got to really go through all of this and it will drive you crazy if you try to work each one of these, 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 these combinations and work your way over. I challenge you. I looked at a few people that might have posted something like that uh, of what they thought was, but they followed a typical pattern, what they thought was um, a balance, you know, compression. Therefore, this has got to be tension. This has got to be, this has got to be compression. That's got to be tension. And this one's got to be, therefore, compression. This one's got to be tension. This one's got to be compression. This one's got to be tension. You know, that's not the way this bridge is designed, I don't think. You know, I, based on, it's height ratios. It's not a typical 60 degree membered bridge. So you can't just go on what you typically may think you know. A couple of them were uh, trust guys that worked in the trust company fields. And so they think that um, their experiences tell them that it, everything must fall under that. And that would be sort of their post hoc thing that, you know, that, uh, but they don't know how to tie it together. This guy's video is called Trust Bridge Tension. Compression analysis, physics, statics, equilibrium. And he's using 60 degree angles here. And there we go. So this would not really apply to that bridge. But have fun at this and see if you can learn from it. And you'll learn about torques and uh, net zero members and things like that. I found that one for you. Now with this, let's wrap this video up with some fun here. This is uh, testing of post-tension coupled shear walls. Especially number two. It's a beautiful lab video, only 516 views at this time. Let's see how many of you guys can take it up to. And it's, it's not, it's not um, audio. So I'll have a little fun with you, and I'll watch. Uh, let's see this. Let's see if I can speed it up for you. Normal. And let's go to uh, 1.5. And you can start seeing it moving. And I want you to observe... Let's see, I'm at 313. Let me write that down as I'm talking to you because I'm going to come back to that. Look at the ability of this structure being able to move, apparently made of concrete and post-tension. And these are shear walls. So you have an, uh, a structure they're testing to see what's happening. Look at all that beautiful movement. And now I am going to, and you're like, well, nothing's going on. Well, let me help you out with what's going on. Looking, looking here, here, you're going to see the member starting to fail, uh, the, the structure starting to fail, but yet it has enough, looks like structural integrity to get out in time. They just reset some things, and you're going to see this thing just start blowing apart. At the bottom, these are your tension failures typically. Okay, it's reloading. Right. A tension failure when you, when you see this at the bottom, but we've got some beautiful movement going on in this structure. I mean, it really is some hurricane, I mean, uh, earthquake type movements. I don't think I'm going to replay this video. I think I'll just let it ride. You guys can come to it and slow it down and have fun with it. And they got all kind of monitoring devices on it. And speaking of that, someone said that they found some monitoring device video of this bridge. Well, I didn't find any, and I asked them to find the video showing me that it was being installed on this bridge. Look how much this thing can move. It's, it's awesome. This is what I'm saying. With those, the hinge that you saw in the, in, the, uh, in the drawings is designed to help with this moving north and south, which means this whole thing would slide at that point. It couldn't lift upwards. It would be sliding, so all these must have some ability to slide which means I don't think they would be grouted because it would create a shear at each one of these, a shear point on each one of their post-tensioning members, post-tensioning bars. All right, I'm going to wrap this up with the final conclusion with that. With, with that. Remember, there were tons of engineers that had, expert engineers I'm going to call them, that had their hands in this. They did not see the collapse of this bridge. You can clearly say that they didn't see the collapse because if they saw it, well, then they would have stopped and they would not have, done it you know can proceed it now did they take chances and risk uh i don't know that's you know we'd have to figure out if they had knowledge of or that should their should their expert knowledge given them knowledge had the knowledge to know they were taking a risk so it appears that these these guys are designed to slide based on my new statement of this of the hinging of this not being grouted of this being possibly shear walls uh shear a shear member, the, the post-tensioning 
bars being a shear member counterbalancing each other on opposite ends so it can't move north and it can't move south being in balance in balance these this one and this guy this is 11 and that's two okay so the uh these guys maybe they were bringing this back in balance and the cracks maybe the cracks mean nothing you know remember post hoc we want to tie the cracks into the failure maybe they mean absolutely nothing okay ending this video and thanks for watching and you know thanks uh fred for uh your donation man that was awesome thanks a lot